Hello toppers, today we are going to discuss something different from our routine practice. So today it's about a clinical entity that is pruritus, how we will approach. So imagine you are sitting in our in your OPD and a patient is coming to you and they are complaining that they are having itching which is none other than pruritus in medical terminology. And they surely they might be saying that there is any factor which is aggravating or any factor which is ameliorating the condition. And uh, if we are inquiring more, they will be telling regarding the associated features also. And if we are inquiring more, they will be telling any associated disease conditions uh, which they might be suffering uh, from childhood like associated tendencies which can be of allergic types. In case of skin diseases, that will also be there. And finally, we all know that eyes can't see what mind doesn't know. So, the main thing which will be standing in front of us is the morphology of the skin lesion, which we have to look in detail regarding whether it is a papule or a macule or a squamous lesion. Those things we have to go for and we can check for any vesicles or erythematous lesions, so and so on. Like lot of morphological things are associated with pruritus. So, so today we are going to discuss few common conditions where we can see pruritus as the presenting complaint. So let's see. So first comes the differential diagnosis of itching that to the common differential diagnosis. So let's see what are all those things. First comes our urticaria, then comes psoriasis you might have seen in your OPD and atopic dermatitis, then irritant contact dermatitis, then food allergy and drug allergy which is directly associated with urticaria which is also an allergic mediated condition. Then miliaria or prickly heat which is the most common condition where what we are experiencing now in our OPDs. Then folliculitis which is associated with hair follicle. Then comes dermatophytosis which is none other than a fungal infection. Then comes our infestations. If infestations are there first comes our scabies. Then comes pediculosis, then ticks and honeybees. And in case of intestinal parasites, in case of helminthic infection, you might have uh, like listened to the condition cutaneous larva migraines. Then comes a papillosquamous lesion that is lichen planus. Then comes lichen simplex chronicus. Then comes the dry skin which is also called as asteatotic dermatitis. Okay, then comes senile pruritus. So these are all the common conditions which will lead to itching which uh, will be presented in our OPD as the presenting complaint. So let's see how they will be presenting and how we can easily diagnose it. So that is the uh, point of focus here. So first we are going to discuss regarding urticaria and angioedema. So you can see these bumps here. So here you can see the raised lesions above the skin. Okay, so let me explain you the basic morphology. Two things I had told already, one is macule and another one is papule. Okay, so macule is also less than, sorry, less than 0.5 centimeter and papule is also less than 0.5 centimeter. So how we can call the lesion like just consider that this is the skin surface and macules won't be going beyond like above the skin surface that is macule and here in case of papule it will be little bit raised okay so based upon these type of uh, appearance we will name the skin lesion as macule and if it is raised then we will call it as papule so here in case of urticaria you can see the papules and mild erythema is also there, erythema is none other than redness you can see and here also patient usually presents with severe pruritus. So here in case of urticaria, there will be edema in dermis 
and in case of angioedema it is a little bit severe condition and here we can see edema in dermis and subcutaneous tissues so the basic pathology behind this urticaria and angioedema is most commonly immune origin and few are of non immune origin so here what will happen mast cells will be there just imagine that these are all the mast cells here because of any trigger like you can consider like whatever type of uh, allergen dust allergy like in case of patients having dust allergy in case of patients having any type of food allergy drug allergy what will happen that those things are considered to be triggers so what happen this triggers usually go and irritate the IgE antibodies and what it will do this IgE will go directly to the mast cell and they will activate it and this mast cell secrete histamines and these histamines will get released into the dermis as you can see in urticaria and angioedema and that will lead to the edema okay so if the mast cells are getting broken down in dermis that will lead to urticaria and if the mast cells are getting down, broken down in dermis and subcutaneous tissues that will lead to angioedema and here in case of non immune causes there are few drugs which were leading to urticaria like lesion so basically acute we will call it as less than 6 weeks duration and chronic everyone knows if it is more than Six weeks of duration. So the most interesting thing we should know regarding urticaria is this lesion will appear from few hours to twenty-four hours only, and after that, this uh, like uh, this papules will get reduced on its own, and we can see normal skin. Okay. So this is mainly regarding the urticaria. so you can inform the patient that there is no need to worry and it will resolve on its own within 24 hours and this is more and more important which we should pre inform the patient then if we are discussing regarding the types of urticaria there are few one is dermographic most of the people might have uh, Played this type of dermographic urticaria during your school days. Like if any one of your friend is having this type of urticaria, if we are writing our name on their hand, it will appear. So that is the dermographic urticaria. If any one of you had played this game, just mention in the comment below. Then comes cholinergic urticaria. After becoming overheated, if we are like because of the sweat, then urticaria will come out. That is cholinergic urticaria. Then because of extreme cold, because of extreme sun exposure also that will also lead to urticaria so these are all the uh, different types of urticaria we can expect even like dermographic urticaria is also called as physical urticaria or pressure urticaria there are lot and lot of different types and here the most dangerous thing we should know regarding the angioedema is in angioedema we all know that there will be edema in dermis and subcutaneous tissues also so here the most feared complication is because of anaphylaxis that may lead to laryngeal edema and this laryngeal edema ha may cause asphyxia okay so we should be very cautious regarding this angioedematous condition and in case of angioedema we can see the swelling all over the face and we can uh, see the enlargement of lip and uh, if we are advising for the general management first we have to advise the patient regarding elimination of the trigger okay that is more and more important in case of treating the patient suffering from urticaria okay so this is all regarding the urticaria and angioedema i think now you can easily diagnose a case of urticaria so in this image you can see that this is how the angioedema patient looks like you can see swelling around the eyes and uh, you can see the swelling in face and lips also 
you can see after the resolution of angioedema the patient is looking very normal so if any patient is coming to you with this type of presentation you have to ask regarding the history of any allergy like any other history since childhood like that type of history history of atopicity we can say directly like family history of asthma these things are more and more important and uh, mainly you can ask for uh, drug allergy food allergy histories that will help you to confirm the diagnosis along with the morphology okay so now so now comes the chronic inflammatory condition none other than psoriasis and here this psoriasis is mainly because of genetic causes and also because of environmental issues what are all the environmental influences in case of psoriasis mainly trauma so here if a patient is having this type of genetic predisposition if trauma is occurring in any part that may lead to this papillosquamous lesion so you all know what is papule the lesion which is raised above the skin is called as papule and if there is scaling that lesion will be called as squamous lesion so this psoriasis is a papillosquamous lesion and uh, in case of patient who is having genetic predisposition for psoriasis once they are having trauma they will start developing this papillosquamous lesion at that particular site and this is explained as cobna phenomena people will say wherever i am getting injury uh, here i can see this type of scaly lesion like this is one of the presenting complaint people used to come to us in case of psoriasis and here we can see normally we can see here well defined erythematous indurated plaques you can see this induration even in the figure itself you can identify and here you can see this white scales which is very large and a silvery scales will be there in case of psoriasis and here there are different types of psoriasis and among them three are more and more important for like most common one is chronic plague psoriasis and then comes acute gutted psoriasis gutted is nothing but raindrop pattern if you are examining the back of the patient you can see this type of raindrop all over the back and that is also called as gutted psoriasis and that is mainly associated with streptococcal infection if you are asking the history you may get throat infections and the most uh, important thing which we have to look in psoriasis that is pustula psoriasis and uh, this pustula psoriasis may lead to secondary bacterial infection also so be cautious with this condition and uh, i had told regarding the morphology of psoriasis till now and now regarding the location of psoriasis how the patient used to present we know the morphology now it is very clear and now we should know the location it is seen in scalp and wherever you are giving more pressure you just imagine mainly in elbows we used to give more pressure so in that pressure points we can see and it is of uh, a type of a cobner phenomena because of lot of pressure that may lead to injury and that injury will develop into psoriasis then extensus this will help you to rule out the condition very very easily along with the morphology and uh, whenever a skin patient is coming we must examine the palms and soles scalp and genital area so if we are checking then we may get the lesion in this area also and sometimes there may be generalized lesions also okay in case of psoriasis so now we are very clear regarding the morphology then the cobna phenomena exhibited by psoriasis and then also regarding the locations and a few types this is more good than now let's see some bedside examination so in case of bedside we can first we have to scrap the lesion with the glass like okay that is called as gratage test that is one of the test which we can perform 
in case of psoriasis in dead side and we have to scrap the lesion with the help of a glass light and after scrapping what we can see we can see a glistening membrane below this like here if after scrapping we can see the glistening membrane okay here it is not visible but uh, you are directly examining you can see that and that is also called as bulky li membrane bulky li membrane okay so next after removing we can see pin point bleeding spots under the scales so everyone know regarding that pin point bleeding that is aspect sign so these are all the bedside examination you can perform in case of a psoriatic patient one is gratage test then you can see the bulky membrane and finally you can see the auspice sign also so this is all regarding the psoriasis and uh, along with psoriasis you should know that this psoriasis is usually associated with psoriatic arthritis so this psoriatic arthritis comes under zero negative spondyloarthropathy that is hla b27 around 10 percentage of people suffering from psoriasis may develop this psoriatic arthritis and it have its own uh, x-ray manifestations which we can see and as i had told we have to go for nail examination also in case of a skin patient so in psoriasis we can see thimble pitting which is one of the pathognomonic feature of psoriasis so now it is very clear that if a patient of psoriasis is coming to you you can diagnose it based upon the morphology then location then bedside examination then based on the nail examination also so now comes the atopic dermatitis so here first thing we should know is regarding the location even in the image you can see that in case of children age group the location is different and in case of adult the location is different let me explain you so here first in case of infants it will start at 3 months of age mothers used to get a fright and we can all, like we can ask for the family history of atopicity Uh, like a bronchial asthma or any recurrent skin infection in any blood related persons then we can easily go with the atopic dermatitis along with the location if it is confirming so in case of infant there will be itchy lesion on the face and other parts and the thing which you should know is there will be sparring in the diaper region in case of infants okay sparring in diaper region then comes childhood like in case of children the lesions will be on fluxors so here comes the differentiating point in case of psoriasis it will be on extensors and in case of atopic dermatitis the children will be suffering from fluxor lesions and the same in case of adult also they will be suffering from lesions on the fluxor aspect okay these things are more and more important like location even uh, helps you with the diagnosis and here as i had already told like atopicity is also an autoimmune condition like uh, ig will be mediated so here we can see any associations of other autoimmune diseases also and then complication simple we may expect any bacterial viral or fungal complication and here there is one specific criteria that is hanifin and rajka criteria here we are having main like in this we are having minor and major criteria and this criteria is mainly used in research purposes so now let's see the clinical diagnostic criteria clinically how we are going to diagnose first one is itchy skin along with the itchy skin we can expect three or other more criteria let's see the onset should be less than 2 years of age then history of skin 
decrease involvement history of dry skin then history of atopicity in family like family history is more important and we have to visibly see the flexural dermatitis this is more and more important clue to diagnose a condition even with this location in particular we had diagnosed a case of atopic dermatitis in national institute of homeopathy so clinically we can diagnose atopic dermatitis if we are having itchy skin and along with that if we are having any of these criteria like three or more criteria is needed to confirm the diagnosis so onset should be less than 2 years of age and history of involvement of skin crease then uh, uh, there will be history of dry skin then atopicity in family then there will be visible flexural dermatitis i think now uh, you are clear regarding the atopic dermatitis so next condition now comes the irritant contact dermatitis you are clear that with the name itself something in contact is causing irritation and leading to dermatitis so here in this image you can see there might be some metal ring which is leading which had led to this type of irritant contact dermatitis so before getting in detail with the contact irritant contact dermatitis we should know that in case of contact dermatitis we have two different types one is irritant contact dermatitis and another one is allergic contact dermatitis so in case of irritant contact dermatitis even water can act as an allergen or sweat we had seen like some people used to say after uh, getting sweat i used to get uh, uh, itching and then i used to bath so that is none other than irritant contact dermatitis and uh, i had seen a case where rain water caused this type of itching like he will be having lot of itching after the after drenching in rain and uh, adding to that we can expect allergens such as detergents then cleansing agents we can expect if we are asking the history we can easily go with the diagnosis shampoos any alkalis you all know regarding these chemicals and here comes the allergic contact dermatitis this is quite difficult to identify and here the more common allergens were because once we are getting exposed with the allergen like in case of irritant contact dermatitis they will be going in water and suddenly that will lead to the itchiness so we can easily get to know what caused the allergy but in case of allergic contact dermatitis it would be difficult to identify and here in case of acd we can expect the common allergens such as plant then metal then cosmetics and medicines are any like rubber also causes this allergic contact dermatitis and here this allergic contact dermatitis belongs to type 4 sensitivity still now we had seen type 1 sensitivity where ige gets involved but in case of allergic contact dermatitis it is clear that it is of type 4 hypersensitivity reaction and here we can diagnose it with the help of patch test okay so here the most important thing in case of contact dermatitis is if we are asking regarding the histories then we can come to the diagnosis along with the location of the itching okay as we are in summer we are very clear regarding this malaria or prickly heat which we can commonly seen in our opd so here this prickly heat is mainly because of the obstruction and rupture of the eccrine sweat gland so we all know regarding the skin surface and here we will be having this hair follicle and along with the hair follicle we will be having sweat and sebaceous gland where it will pour out the sweat and sebum so here what will happen there will be obstruction and there will be rupture of the eccrine sweat ducts like these ducts will be getting uh, ruptured and uh, all the sweat will be going into the nearby areas okay so this is mainly leading to the malaria because of the sweat getting into the adjoining tissues okay so here in case of malaria we have three different types so one is malaria crystallina
नेक्स्ट वन मिलीरिया रूब्रा and the last one malaria profunda so these different types were based upon the location where the uh, sweat gland duct is getting ruptured so here in case of malaria crystallina the sweat gland duct ruptures below the stratum carneum okay in case of malaria rubra it gets ruptured in epidermis and in case of malaria profunda it gets ruptured at the dermo epidermal junction so this makes the difference so the common advice we can give is to avoid the hot humid environment and we should advise the patient to go for cotton rest so that it will absorb all the sweat i think now you can easily diagnose a condition even by looking at it people will be saying that exactly and even they will diagnose the condition and come to us regarding this malaria or prickly heat so next condition so here comes our dermatophytosis so before going in detail with this first start with the basic thing so in case of fungal infection we have two that is one is superficial and another one is deep fungal infection so in case of superficial we have three different conditions one is dermatophytosis which we are going to see now then pityriasis versicola many people used to confuse this pityriasis versicola and dermatophytosis and the last one is candidiasis and in case of deep we have four different condition one is mycetoma and then comes porotrichosis and next one chromoblastomycosis and at last subcutaneous zygomycosis so here in this uh, image you can see the clinical presentation like there are ring like lesion here we can see erythema and somewhere we can see the white white lesion that is scales is there and erythematous lesions are also there i think map, map, i think we have both the papules and macules and the most interesting thing we are having clear margin so once a patient is coming to us first try to write down the symptom in this aspect clear margin and now you can see that there is clearance in the center like there is no much affection in the center okay so this is the morphology of the lesion who is coming to you so first write down the morphology then try to find out the lesion causing it then try to find out the diagnosis in case of dermatophytosis we have different types if it is affecting the uh, scalp then it is called as capitis and and if it is affecting the beard it is called as barbe and if it is affecting whole body then it is called as carporis and if it is affecting the crura it is cruris and if it is affecting the nails it is called as tinea unguinum and if it is affecting the leg it is called as tinea pedis and it is also called as athlete feet we are not going to discuss that in detail so now still now we know exactly what is the morphology of the condition and based upon the history we can diagnose the condition so what are the history we can expect history there will be asymmetrical lesion yes for sure and there will be contact history because fungal infection used to be contacted spread through the contact and now just a recap regarding the diagnostic features so in case of tinea carporis and crurus we will be having itchy lesion and along with that we will be having annular annular is nothing but this type of lesion with the central clearance and a 
all around the lesion will be very active. So annular lesion and here in case of periphery we will be having papulovesicles, peripheral papulovesiculations. And along with that, we will be having scaling and central, relative central clearance, not exact complete central clearance, but we can expect some type of clearance in case of center. Okay. So, if it is tinea capitis, it is usually seen in children, and we can expect alopecia and easy hair pluckability. If we are trying to pluck the hair, it will come very easily. Then comes the last one that is tinea anguinum. It's about the diagnostic points now we are discussing. So if we are examining the nails of a patient suffering from tinea anguinum, the lesion will be asymmetrical and uh, mainly the things will be developing from the distal end of the nail and uh, we may see the yellow brown discoloration of nail. Yellow brown discoloration, then we can expect thick nail plate, and there will be brittling of nails that is nothing but one echo lysis. So, these are all the diagnostic points regarding tinea carporis, tinea capitis, and tinea anguinum. Regarding the infestation and bites, the most important condition that we should discuss is cabbies which is commonly skin, seen in our OPDs and it is because of the arthropod sarcopitus scabby and here the diagnostic points extremely itchy condition which usually gets aggravated during the night time and then comes this usually gets contracted to the other person if a person is having prolonged intimate contact with the other person who is suffering already and then we can uh, see like uh, now it's regarding the location we can see it in webs finger spaces then in case of wrist then ulnar aspect of forearm so based upon the location also we can diagnose around breast then scrotum and penis. So these are all the important uh, location where we can find the symptoms of scabies which is simply itchy lesion. And here in case of adult there may be sparring of face, palms and soles. This is more important to exclude the diagnosis also. So these are all the diagnostic points and uh, if we are examining it, uh, the lesion with the help of lens, here we can see burrows, minute burrows we can see only with the help of hand lens and uh, so this is all regarding the diagnostic points of scabies. It will be extremely itchy and uh, you can find any history, contact history and uh, based upon the location and mainly sparring we can go with the diagnosis of scabies. And now, still now we are talking only regarding the clinical diagnosis and morphology. We are not talking regarding the laboratory investigations that we will discuss in the second part. So, here comes the most important, another important papulosquamous lesion where we used to confuse it for the psoriasis condition. Okay. So here itching will be voluptuous and in, if we are talking regarding lichen planus it is more and more important to talk regarding 5P of lichen planus. So first one is pruritic. Yes it is sure. Then it will be of polygonal shape. And you can see the mild purplish lesion everywhere so the second third one is purple then there is no like even in the sideways you can see that there is no rays in the lesion so it is a plain lesion and sometimes we can see papules also okay so like little bit raised also we can see 
So these are all the five piece pruritic polygonal purple plane and papules are seen in case of lichen planus. And the another important thing for the diagnosis is the site of lichen planus around the wrists, ankles, shins, and sorry, shin it is, and lower back. So these are all the exactly diagnostic location for lichen planus so based upon these things we can diagnose and adding to that we have one important morphological condition that is Wickham's triad this you might have read for uh, MCQ purpose but if you are examining the lesions in detail you may have the white lacing lesions going here and there in, inside the uh, lesion that is Wickham's triad in lichen planus so next, so then comes lichen simplex chronicus, like a lot of patients used to come with this exact lesion in the ankle joint, like uh, they will be saying I am having this lesion for a long duration, like it is a chronic condition and lichen is nothing but lichenification, lichenification is one of the secondary skin lesion we can see, like uh, uh, because of the uh, like the skin uh, lesion will be of long duration and that may lead to lichenification that is nothing but thickening of skin so here in this lesion you can see the thickening and the location is of predominantly seen in the ankle so here let's see what it is lichen simplex chronicus which is also called as neurodermatitis and here morphologically what we can see as I had told we can see the single lichenified plates And if we are inquiring regarding the history, we may get atopic diathesis. Any family member might be suffering or the particular person might be suffering. And if we are talking regarding the location of lichen planus, the most infamous location is what we are seeing in the image. Then adding to that, in case of women, we can see in nape of neck. And in case of men, we can see in legs and anogenital region okay so these are all the locations and easily we can diagnose this lichen simplex chronicus instead of naming it as a chronic dermatitis so next so this is a steatotic eczema which is also called as dry skin you can see in any people uh, who were suffering from the allergy or atopic diathesis. I had also seen in the OPDs. And in case of winter also, we can see these type of skin lesions. So, let's see in detail regarding this condition. So, this is commonly seen in old age. Then, if there is low humidity, that will lead to this asteatotic eczema and winter also lead to this. And one hypo, and sorry, endocrine causes that is Hypothyroidism leads to this uh, drying skin and we can expect any underlying malignancies leading to this asteatotic eczema. And here what will happen, the skin will be extremely itchy and we can see this reticular pattern. I think you can see here this reticular pattern, this square square or reticulate, you can see. So this reticular pattern will be there and it is mainly seen in case of shins and low back so this is the location for a steatotic eczema and uh, if it is occurring in old age it is directly called as senile pruritus so this is all regarding the steatotic eczema and dry skin i think you can diagnose the condition now easily so still now we had discussed regarding the common causes now regarding the occasional causes like if we are not getting uh, any of the disease condition which we had seen above with the uh, presentation then we have to think about other conditions such as ure uremic pruritus then cholestatic pruritus uh, which we can see in case of pregnancy and it may be because of some other infections and uh, pregnancy may also lead to pruritus and postmenopausal age group also lead to this pruritus then so these are all the rare causes which you have to think. First one is ichthyosis which is also called as genodermatosis which is mainly because of the genetic 
tissue, genodermatosis we will say. And then comes dermatitis herpetiformis which is a, one of the extremely itchy condition and it is associated with celiac disease and it has IgA mediated reaction. And in case of endocrine diseases, we will be having hyper, hypothyroidism, carcinoid syndrome, diabetes mellitus and hyperparathyroidism. And in case of hematological disorder, we will be hitting uh, IDA that is iron deficiency anemia, then pernicious anemia and leukemia. And in case of neurological disorders, there may be post-stroke pruritus. And in case of myeloproliferative, we can expect a polycythemia, rubravera, multiple myeloma. And here comes the primary biliary cirrhosis where itching is the most common like uh, presenting complaint. And hyper eosinophilic syndrome, yes we know then cutaneous T-cell lymphoma which is also called as mycosis fungitis. And sometimes it is of psychogenic origin also which usually we tell as mental itch. I cannot uh, forget this word mental itch. So, these are all the rare causes for pruritus. So, still now, so still now, in this video, we had discussed regarding the morphology of the condition and how to diagnose and uh, now a little bit clarity regarding the history to be asked. And here in part 2 video, we will be discussing regarding the investigations that is mainly of laboratory oriented. And we will be discussing exactly in detail what are the histories has to be asked in the clinical OPD. Okay. So, thank you so much. Happy learning with us.